Welcome everybody to a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video today. And this week, this week is pretty packed, man. I mean, we have the DC animated adventure film Batman Soul of the Dragon hitting store shelves along with the, the comedy action fantasy Fat Man? <laughs> the dramatic horror film Come Play, season two of Doom Patrol, season one of Snowpiercer, and Arrow Video is releasing a Blu-ray edition of the 2006 weird mystery comedy drama Southland Tales, plus much, much more. So let's go see the deals, exclusives, and we are at our first location. Walmart. So let's go in and see what they got. All right, we are in at. This is not my favorite Walmart of all time, but hey, whatever they let me film in here, we're here. <laughs> and take a wild guess, guys. We've got nothing new over here whatsoever to show off. Not at all. Now, they do have, actually, Max Cloud from last week, which is really cool that they finally have it. Again, a week late, but better late than never, I suppose. But it's kind of weird because if you see Max Cloud, the tag is not for Max Cloud. It's for Yellow Rose. Then you have Toys of Terror over here, which is under Love and Monsters. You have Love and Monsters, and that is under Spell. Then you have Spell, and that is under Batman Soul of the Dragon. You have the Twilight Zone Season 2, and that is under Fat Man. Uh, it seems like they're getting the tags already. I mean, they even have one for, for Come Play, but they don't actually have the actual physical media discs themselves. Uh, bummer, dare I say? I mean, is there anything new worth checking out? Well, our wish is somewhat granted under another new release area where I am seeing Batman, Soul of the Dragon. Hey, at least it's something, guys. I mean, something, again, with this Walmart at times is better than nothing. And hey, at least we get to see some animated Batman goodness, right? They have Batman Soul of the Dragon, the Blu-ray digital for $19.96, the DVD for $14.96. Now, this is actually an only at Walmart exclusive, so if you guys are only into DVD and are looking to pick this up, you're only going to find it over at Walmart. Just saying, so just keep that in mind, guys. But I actually really do like the artwork on this. I think the artwork is actually really cool. I like... I like that. I like sort of the hand-drawn animation i like the sort of very bruce lee kung fu influence on this movie especially the artwork and it definitely shows man now basically i watched this on amazon prime okay and i was i was hyped for it because i'm starting to get more into dc animated movies i'm watching them more and more I'm loving everything I'm seeing from the DC animated world. They're, they're some of the best. I'm not going to lie, man. And when I heard about this, I'm like, okay, Batman, Soul of the Dragon. I'm very curious and interested what this is going to sort of what I'm kind of in for, I guess. And what I found out is it's not based on any sort of comic book adventure. It sort of is an amalgamation of different ideas and characters, but it's more of like something from like the else world of another iteration of Batman in another time, a storyline that is really separate from the main stuff that has really gone, gone on. It takes place basically in the 70s. Bruce Wayne and a bunch of these people have learned martial arts from this Kung Fu ma master. Years later, Kung Fu master goes missing and they have to sort of team up to find out what happened to him and sort of rescue him and sort of save the day, that, that type, type of deal. Now, I'm not going to lie because I'm a little mixed on this movie. I think it's got some really great ideas. It tries to mix sort of 
a James Bond movie with a Bruce Lee movie, you know, sort of 70s exploitation cinema. It tries to mix them all together in a Batman movie or sort of Batman animated tale, I should say, and it doesn't really completely work to me. Some of the characters are cool and interesting. Others, there's not really much developed. They're just there to be there. And even the, the, the thing about it is even Batman himself, it, it's, it's titled Batman Soul of the Dragon, but Batman really isn't even the main focus in this movie. He's more of a side character than anything else. He, it's, he's not really all that even relevant for the most part. It's, it's other characters that are more prominent. I understand why they're putting Batman on the title, why they're putting Batman on the cover, because you want to sell copies of this movie, you're not just going to call it DC Animated Movie Soul of the Dragon, no one's going to buy the fucker, I mean, just, I mean, I'm being honest, I'm being real, man, if you put Batman on there, suddenly people's interest peak, suddenly people are interested in it, and they're going to want to pick it up, and they're going to want to buy it. Again, it's not bad. I like the kung fu influence here. Some of the animated action sequences are kind of cool. But I gotta admit, guys, to be honest with you, even the animation is kind of weak here. I mean, compared to other DC Universe movies, the animation doesn't really stack up with some of the other ones. I mean, as the years go on, animation gets better, but this one kind of had a little bit of a drop-off for me. It's some interesting ideas interesting characters. I like that there's a mashup of genres here, but I gotta be real and say that the movie sort of left me sort of wanting more and sort of left me sort of feeling a little empty and not as satisfied as I've been with other DC animated films. It's a real shame because there's a lot of good ideas here and, it, and there's potential, but with Batman having a sideline role, the mashups not really gelling together all that well and characters that I didn't really connect with all that much uh, it just comes off as average at best maybe even slightly less uh, honestly it's a real shame it's one of the lesser ones that I've seen in, in quite quite a while but it's still worthy for people who love Batman who love these Elseworld adventures but go in with check expectations just say, saying guys just check the expectations uh, uh, a little bit but if you're thinking you're gonna find a full-on Batman story you are highly highly wrong man just saying on that one the only other thing I'm seeing over here is they do have and it's been out for a while but they have that limited collector's edition blu-ray DVD digital of Sonic the Hedgehog the movie and this is a new edition that came out it it just basically has a different slipcover with exclusive mini posters that's about it I mean, other than that, it's pretty much the exact same disc, just with different artwork attached to it. And you see this all the time. They're always repackaging movies with newer slips and newer covers, something extra to entice you. I love the movie, and the slip is cool, the artwork's cool, I'm not gonna, gonna lie. Do I really need the mini posters? Not exactly. I mean, trust me, I... I like rebuy stuff constantly based on artwork and other things. Would I do it for Sonic the Hedgehog? Mm, doubtful, but for if you're a fan, I can see why you would. But it's pretty much the same disc though. I mean just saying. Other than that, I hate to say it, that seems to be it guys, but hey, at least we got to see Batman Soul of the Dragon and like I said, something is better than nothing nothing. Not half bad, man. Alright, well, hey. At least we got to see Batman Soul of the Dragon. Pretty cool. All right. Let's head out. Ah, the ever non-reliable Walmart. <laughs> oh, I love it. Go, ah, oh, come on, man. I mean, it's always an adventure week in and week out. I mean, right? I mean, there are weeks where we see a decent amount of physical media and other weeks where even though there's a plentiful week, and they should have a lot of the releases. They don't. Hell if I know, man. I mean, they do have the tags for most of that stuff, but unfortunately, yeah, they just either don't have it in stock or it's back there on the truck and uh, they can't find it or the third party vendor hasn't gotten here yet. I mean, there's a bunch of thoughts who knows which one is actually right, but I mean, at least we got to see one thing. I mean, that Batman animated m movie, which 
again, for all you DC animated lovers, it's cool to see. But uh, there is plenty more where that came from. I just wish this Walmart would have actually supplied it. They'll probably have it next week. A week late. Better late than never, I suppose. Well, let's hope that this adventure keeps on rolling and more physical media is ahead. Let's check the next door and see what physical media goodness we can find more than we found here. All right, everybody. We are at our second location, Target. Now, before we go in and check out hopefully some good physical media, I got to talk to you guys about something. Now, I was recently a while back telling you guys about how there is certain shows and movies that go exclusively to these streaming platforms and how they sort of are starting to define the way that you view all of this media. Now, if any of you out there, including myself, I'm a big fan of The Office, love The Office, I'm sure a lot of you guys do as well, and... If you've noticed, and how couldn't you have noticed, is that Netflix is no longer carrying The Office. Now the Peacock streaming service from NBC is now. And it's caused a lot of controversy. And it actually has made people start to come back to physical media. Let me explain. So there's a really, really great article that I found that I thought was kind of interesting, actually. The show's first two seasons are free on the NBC service, but streaming the entire series will set you back $4.99 a month or $9.99 if you want to revel in Dwight's strange antics with fewer, not none, but fewer, annoying advertisements. As several superfans flocked to Peacock to watch The Office, with Forbes reporting that the beloved sitcom accounted for 9.2% of the platform streaming in the first few weeks of 2021. A few others were pretty peeved about NBC's television tears, taking to Twitter to proverbial yell, No God, please, no! into the digital void. There's been a bunch of people who have been talking about it and complaining and you name it. And a lot of people who are driving towards that wonderful DVD and Blu-ray goodness. So, look. Now, $4.99 a month is not a bad deal, all things considered. And neither is $9.99 a month. However, do you really think that those prices are going to stick? I don't. I think those are going to go up. And the fact that Peacock is literally pricing their tiers based off of The Office. Because they know that's all they have. Seriously. They have nothing else to offer primarily except for The Office. Now, of course, they recently had a merger with uh, the, the WWE Network. So the WWE stuff, I believe, is going on Peacock as well, if I'm not mistaken. So... There's that extra little bit for fans of wrestling to want to get in there. And I know wrestling is a huge industry and business. So I know that's going to help Peacock out a lot. But I don't know, man. I, you know, I hear the argument all the time. The argument that I hear is always, well, Seth, you have to pay a, a good amount of money for a season of a TV show when you could just pay four ninety nine a month or $10 a month for for the office on Peacock. That's a really great deal. But at the same time, and I always say this, this is the ultimate investment in physical media. And I think this is why it matters when it comes to streaming overall. Because you have to remember something, guys. This is a big one here. That when you buy a DVD or a Blu-ray of a season of a, of a show or a movie, you're paying a one-time fee. Okay, you're paying a one-time price and then it's yours for however long you keep it. It's yours. And trust me, I have had media for like, you know, 20 plus years. So, you know, if you treat it right, it lasts. Okay? And that's that one-time fee. You're paying 5 to $10 a month or more every single month. And eventually, it's going to catch up to the price that you originally paid for that season and... Go high, uh, go higher up 
which means that the original price you paid ended up actually benefiting you in the long run. In the short run, you all oh got him paying twenty or thirty dollars and you know whatever, but eventually you end up actually saving money in the long run. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. A lot of people feel that streaming is the dominant force and will always be the dominant force and there's really no reason to to try to argue that but at the end of the day i think the office is a prime example of of seeing a streaming platform take a specific item that people love and manipulating it and basically holding it hostage your fandom of The Office or whatever other TV show or movie is literally being held hostage by these streaming platforms. And it's the honest to God truth. And if you want it, well, guess what? You're going to pay. And if you don't want to pay, then guess what? You're just not going to have it. That's it. And that's why I think physical media, to me, going forward, 2021, beyond whatever, is vastly important. Because you're just not being held hostage by these streaming services. You're just not. And, you know, look, I mean, The Office is very popular, and rightfully so. It deserves to be popular. I love that show. But there's so many shows, unlike The Office, that don't get a chance to be on streaming and may never be on streaming. So what about those? Those are just literally forgotten by the streaming services, and nothing will ever be done about that. But they could be on DVD and Blu-ray. And that is an opportunity to keep them, to cherish them, and to know that you have them versus somebody else that might just be waiting for them to come on streaming, and that day might never come. So it's interesting now to look at streaming platforms as taking these popular entities and shaping their their pricing based on that. But it's also fascinating to seeing these companies holding your love of these beloved series and shows and characters hostage for you to pay more money on their platform. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I, I, I'm telling you. It's... <sighs> you know... I've always told you guys that at the end of the day, you really need to look at the ups and downs of streaming. There's a lot of ups to it, and there's also a lot of downs. But if we don't weigh all the options, then we don't get the complete overview of what's going on. It's the same thing with physical media. There are advantages and there are disadvantages to it, but if we don't have those conversations, then the narrative is already shaped. And we have to look at the whole perspective before we fully judge. And sometimes with streaming, all I'm seeing is, oh, we, we, we need to do this and we need to pay for this because of this. That's not always the case. So just know what you're getting into sometimes and always weigh the options. I'm definitely interested to hear what you guys think. Definitely let me know. In the meantime... Well, it's a uh, wintry wonderland outside here in New York State. But, um, well, that doesn't really matter because physical media still reigns supreme every single week. Rain, snow, sleet, warmth, cold, doesn't matter. Physical media goes on. And hopefully, with a plentiful week, Target will definitely deliver. Let's hope. The only way to find out is that inside, so let's check it out. All right, everybody, we are in at Target, and, well, outside of clearly some Batman love, there is literally nothing else to show off here this week. Nothing, nada, no way, no how. I mean, it seems like everybody is going to be having Batman, but nothing else. I don't know what we're in for this week, man. Oh, baby. But, hey, something is better than nothing. And like I said, Batman love with Batman, Soul of the Dragon. The 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray Digital for $27.99. The Blu-ray Digital for $22.99. Now, this is a DC Elseworlds story. Now, if you don't know a lot about DC Elseworlds stories, basically, it's like alternate reality. Basically, it's like what would happen if sort of those type of stories or sort of almost like a what if tale 
if this happened to this character instead of that ha happened. And it's sort of these unique takes that DC does from time to time. Now, we have seen a few of these in animated form, which have been really cool. But I'm kind of curious about the ones that haven't been done yet. And if there's ones that you guys think are worthy for the the animated adventures for the DC Universe to put out. Like, I was thinking about a few of them. Like, there's ones like Kingdom Come, which is really cool. Batman Dark Allegiances. Uh, Green Lantern Evil's Might, which is a cool one. There's a couple I really like. You do, I do like Superman Cal, where Superman is grown up in sort of like, like almost like medieval Europe or, or, or something like, 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 like that. And he's grown up as a blacksmith. Like, like some very interesting stuff there. And the other one I really like is um, Superman Speeding Bullets, which is a really amazing one. Basically what that one is, guys, is it's, it's basically... What if Kal-El came down to Earth and was picked up by the Waynes? And they, and they named him Bruce, and he actually became Batman. And so it, it, it's a very unique and interesting take on a what-if story that I really like, of just Batman with, with superpowers, basically Superman just in Batman form. I think that's a really cool idea like i said there's a lot of really really great elseworld stories that are incredibly unexplored man and i'm always really interested in some of that stuff like some of the animated stuff beforehand was really cool like batman ninja was really interesting and unique i really like that that one a lot i also really like the the one um the batman versus ninja turtles one which i thought was really unique kind of cool mashup elseworld style story there's been some really cool ones out there that the DC Animated Universe has done. But God, there's so much more potential that they could easily do, man. I'm kind of curious, what are some really great Elseworlds stories from the comics that you guys think are really unique and interesting? As a Superman fan, like I gravitate to those, those really great Superman Elseworlds stories, like the Speeding Bullets one, which I think would be a really cool I I idea. And maybe they've done some of them already. I mean, mind you... I've, I've watched some of the animated universe movies, but not all of them. So maybe they've done some of these ideas already. But like I said, there's some really great potential for more really great, wonderful Elseworlds stories. But do the Elseworlds stories really sell with the fans as well as the more like connected story tales do? I'm not so, so sure, man. I mean, this this one's decent. It's average. But I kind of feel like there was so much more potential for something better. And that, and that it just didn't deliver on the promise. Especially when Batman really isn't much a part of this story. <sighs> there's, there's a really great cool idea doing something 70s Kung Fu style. And really making Batman the lead in that. Just, just didn't do it. There's way better Elseworlds stories that they could have done. It's more of an original idea with some connected parts from previous comic books, but uh, I just feel like as far as an Elseworlds story is concerned, there is better ones to tell. Definitely let me know what you guys think uh, think about this, uh, this one, man. Other than the Batman love, that seems to be it, guys. Which is a real bum bummer, because it's quite a busy week of physical media. A lot of stuff came out, but you wouldn't know it by going to some of these stores. Which is a real shame. Well, guess better luck next time. Alright, let's head out. So, let's see here. No Fat Man. No Come Play. No second season of Doom Patrol, no first season of Snowpiercer, and I could keep on going on and on and on and on and on. It's so weird because I've always told you guys, I said, when it's a slow release week, Target won't have much. But when it's a big release week and there's a lot of stuff coming out, well they'll probably have a decent amount of titles. We've seen it time and time again. That theory has always proven true. Not this time. Which really, really sucks the fat one, man. Really honestly does. I mean, I guess some of it makes sense as far as Target is concerned. I mean, 
Fat Man is a cool movie, but it's basically people trying to kill Santa Claus. I don't know if it's much for Target kid-friendly, put it that way. Then you also have Come Play, which is basically a horror film about kids getting terrorized. Yeah, not very Target-friendly. But what about some of the other ones, man? I mean, jeez. Is it just that they're just not just getting the physical media in, they can't do anything about it? Can't they order this stuff? Oh. Man, this gets to me. This honestly does, guys. I'm always lover of physical media. I'm a champion of it. But when I see this, if you don't have it in, how can you possibly try to sell it? It's the honest to God truth, guys. That's all I'm saying. Well, I guess better luck next time. But oh, there is actually something worth showing off to you guys, though. Speaking of when I was talking about The Office, they actually have the complete series of The Office right here on DVD for $49.99. So literally, you could go on Peacock and you could pay $9.99 a month for barely any, you know, ads or whatever. And about six or so months, you will have already paid more for The Office than if you just got the DVD set. Just saying. Think about it. Think about it. Just putting it out there. <laughs> but, ah, uh, I love my physical media. I love Batman. But there is more physical media that came out this week. But Lord knows Walmart and Target uh, certainly don't seem to be showing it. Let's hope that the next location has more to show off. All right, everybody, we are at our third location, the second Walmart. We're going to go in and see if there's any unique and interesting indie titles. If there is, I will bring it back to Film Fan 108 HQ and show it off to you guys. But before we do that, I got to talk about a trailer. You guys know what I'm going to be talking about, and that is none other than Godzilla vs. Kong! Come and get it, motherfucker! <laughs> oh, shit. Yes, Godzilla vs. Kong is finally coming to a screen, punching its way in your goddamn face this year. Oh, Lord, man. Okay, so... Alright, man. Now... This movie has been anticipated for a while. Ever since it was announced that, yes, we are getting a Godzilla vs. Kong movie. Everyone was hyped because, you know, look, if you're a fan of old-school Godzilla, old-school King Kong, you know that they have battled before and that age-old question of who would actually win the fight, of course, is an age-old question that never gets forgotten, man. And it'll be put to the test yet again this year. So... First off, I want to say that the trailer looks great. I really love the trailer, man. I, I, you know, man, the visuals are going to kill in this movie. There's no doubt about it. The visuals look absolutely stunning and beautiful, incredibly well rendered. The CGI, amazing. No doubt about that. I, I think the fight scenes are going to be really cool. I have a feeling the fight scenes are going to be really dynamic. From what the trailer holds, you can actually see what's happening. It's not, like, very shaky and all over the place. You can actually see the two people, and they're actually fighting, and you can, you can see what's going on. And that's been a problem that I've had in some of the previous movies. With all that being said, okay, and the, that the trailer is incredibly exciting... No doubt about it, and I'm looking forward to uh, to watching it. But that being said, I don't know if I am extremely looking forward to it in the fact of the other films within the, in the series, right? I was not a fan of the Godzilla reboot. I, I wasn't. I mean, outside of the design of Godzilla, which was really cool, I just thought it was a bland movie. You know, you barely even got to see Godzilla. It, it really wasn't my cup of tea as far as a Godzilla fan is concerned. Then you go to Godzilla King of the Monsters. Now, we do have a movie review on the channel for Godzilla King of the Monsters. Definitely go and check it if you haven't. But I'm going to be real with you guys. I didn't really love Godzilla King of the Monsters. There were moments that I liked, 
but I thought the characters were still really bland. I thought the story wasn't all that engaging. Yes, the fight scenes were cool, and yes, there were cool monsters, but to me, you need something more. I, I could watch any monster attacking another monster movie. You've got to have something there to keep me going, and it just didn't do it. And also, at times, I'm not going to lie, with Godzilla, King of the Monsters, it was hard to see the action of what was going on. So, again, it was a step up above the Godzilla reboot, but I was still slightly disappointed. However, I really loved Kong Skull Island. I thought Kong Skull Island was amazing, man. I mean, truly, I thought it was really, really well done. I love the design of Kong. I love the story of them. I believe in like, I believe it was like the 60s or 70s. And I love the characters. I thought the, the Skull Island setting was really cool. Like there was a lot there that I loved. And I thought it was really awesome, man. And I was always hoping they would do another Kong m movie. But that never came to pass. We got more Godzilla, and we're just going straight into Godzilla vs. Kong. I'm curious on a lot of things. I'm curious about, obviously, Kong has gotten much bigger, and I know he was go going to from the last time we saw him. But, you know, from the last time we saw him in Kong Skull Island versus now, I hope they they sort of, like, maybe give us some background of what's been going on. Have they been monitoring Kong? Why haven't they taken advantage of him sooner than this? I, I'm just very curious about the story aspects here. And some of the same characters from Godzilla King of the Monsters is in this movie, and I wasn't really a fan of them in King of the Monsters. So that has me a little bit worried too. I, I mean, look, at the end of the day, the monster versus monster action is going to be the main focus here. And I truly do believe it's going to deliver. But I'm just... I'm just kind of hesitant, man. I'm hesitant because I've been let down by some of these Godzilla movies. And I am a huge fan of King Kong. Like, seriously. Like, that 1933 m movie... Uh, that original black and white King Kong movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. Like, it's one of my top ten favorite films ever. And I've always loved sort of the 70s version, and I've, and so for me, I've always loved Kong more. I appreciate Godzilla. I just don't want them to screw this up, man. This is like, you know, the other films were leading up to this, but this is like the main meal. The others were the appetizers. This is the main course, man. And if you don't get this right, damn, dude, you are going to be disappointing a lot of people, man, including myself. So I, I just want them to deliver, man. I mean, I'm kind of hopeful because the movie's directed by Adam Wingard. Now, if you know Adam Wingard, he directed a great fucking movie in Your Next, which is amazing. Uh, he directed The Guest, which is a really great horror thriller. He directed Blair Witch, which is not, not, not a great movie. Uh, he did direct the live-action version of Death Note, which I have not seen on Netflix yet, but, but I gotta watch that. He's a he's a good director. He knows pop culture. He knows obviously the references to other films. I, I think he's a good fit for this movie. I just want them to get it right. And yes, as much as the monster versus monster action, the Godzilla versus Kong stuff is what we want to see. I just don't want to feel like why are these stupid humans here when I don't care about anything that's going on with with them. I want to care about those people. And the previous movies just didn't really do that for for me. But I like the relationship between this little girl and and Kong. I like that that relationship. It seems like there's something there that that could be really meaningful for for the story. So there is there is things I'm looking forward to, but I am hesitant because some of the other movies have just kind of let me down. But look, with a new Godzilla movie, there's always hope for better because there's always... I mean, let's let's be be real, guys, to be honest with you. Like, like we're always reinventing Godzilla and Kong in one way or another. We're always doing something different with them and more unique and more dynamic and more crazier and, and action-heavy. So I'm just curious of will this movie correct the mistakes of the past and make it a better film or 
are they just going to get uh, basically just stuck in in the ditch of bad of bad ideas and maybe a couple of really good action scenes god i want this film to deliver so badly man let me know what you guys think do you agree with me are you hesitant or are you just uber super excited no matter what happens definitely let me know in the meantime well we've been disappointed by physical media so far not gonna lie man but maybe second walmart can come through well let's hope let's see what second walmart has in store for us well, well, I am back in at the second Walmart, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not really seeing a lot this time around. I mean, I know it's a big release week, a lot of stuff came out, but it doesn't seem like much indie titles did. And as you can see on the side, yeah, not much. I mean, there is stuff there, but most of the stuff we've already seen. However... There is a few things that I noticed that we haven't seen yet. Uh, I was kind of digging a little bit, saw a few interesting things we're checking out. So yes, indeed, we are going back to Film Fan 108 HQ and checking out some indie Walmart goodness. Seth, take it away, buddy. Thank you, Seth. I will take it away from here, buddy. Yes, indeed. It's nice to see something different because boy this video is not where i even thought it would be at this point man i thought we would see a hell of a lot more physical media than we have and no man i mean it is a decent sized release week there is quite a few titles coming out but you wouldn't know it by the stores at this point you certainly wouldn't wow man yeah Talk about lack of selection, man. And as far as the second Walmart is concerned, I mean, look, I'm not expecting the second Walmart to always have stuff to show off. I realize that some weeks are going to be better for weird and bizarre indie titles than other weeks. I get it. I understand it. But, you know, sometimes when you're having sort of a rough week for physical media a little bit does go a long way and thankfully the second walmart did have something to show off it's not a crazy amount but hey at this point i'll take it so how about we dive into some physical media goodness small physical media stack but one that uh is definitely worth diving into Oh yes, some more Walmart physical media goodness. The weird, the religious, the outrageous. Gotta love it. Yes, indeed. Let's dive in, shall we? With the first title being The Penitent Thief. Okay. Based on true events with kevin sorbo okay god kevin sorbo man he he really has embraced these these religious movies hasn't he god he so has man he's done a crap load of them maybe he's always sort of had that sort of sensibility but man over the years we've been seeing a lot of like religious kevin sorbo movies man it's like he's like dived into kirk cameron territory well, it does make a shitload of money. Kind of makes sense, but... And it's not like Kevin Sorbo is being asked to to do, like, Marvel movies or shit. So, you know, might as well get into it, right? Oh, let's see what... Oh, okay. Well, we we know where this is headed. Let's see. The Penitent Thief is the epic and profound story of the two men, Dismas and his brother Jotham, who were crucified along with Jesus and how they came to be beside him on the cross that fateful day together on their journey. We'll try to outrun their destiny, but find no escape from the brutal end that he waits. Ooh, I like that. Look at that. That's some interesting imagery. Whoa. Hmm. I gotta admit, man, I'm not... Well, you guys know me. I'm not, like, the religious guy. I just never have been. It's not that I don't like faith-based or religious movies, because I've talked to you guys about that before. I do like a few of them. This This movie kind of reminds me in some ways of, like, passion of the christ 
right? Like, it's like, you know, Jesus on the cross and the other people who followed him, you know, they ended up getting on their crosses as well and, and you know, sacrificing their uh, their lives. It's probably... Well, it has the potential to be a very powerful movie, put it that way, but this kind of looks a little cheap for my taste. I mean, the one thing you can say about, you know... Yeah, movies like, I don't know, The Temptation of Christ or other movies like that, you know, they have a decent-sized budget. They they can tell a sprawling religious tale. This seems like, you know, well, let's put it, this ain't Passion of the Christ, okay? You know, we get we get Kevin Sorbo on the cross. Okay, that that's, you know, I mean, okay, cool. Apparently, apparently Hercules dies first for our sins spoiler alert <laughs> just saying oh okay well maybe it's good maybe it's bad maybe it's flat out ugly but i'm not really prepared to find out put it that way oh boy good luck to anybody who does then the next thing i'm seeing is they have lena and snowball okay best friends come in all shapes and sizes so I'm assuming that this is Lena, and that's Snowball. Am I right? Well, well, that was just my best guess, but okay. Oh, interesting, cute and cuddly lion cub? Sure, why not? Okay, what is this exactly? Her new best friend is totally wild. Uh, okay, okay. I, 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 I bet it is. Okay. Bloody school and lonely at home. Luna keeps hoping she'll have a true friend someday. And one afternoon, her dreams come true. In the shape of a cuddly white lion cub, Luna tries to keep playful Snowball out of trouble, but the clumsy poachers who kidnapped the valuable cub and the cruel trophy collector who paid for him are desperate to get him back. As Lena races to rescue poor Snowball. Your friend and Jake will do anything to help. Be careful, or Snowball will melt your family's heart. Or rip out your throat. Either way. I mean, both are cute and cuddly. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a friendship story between a girl and her lion cub okay that makes sense right oh god what is up with all these really weird sort of family friendly movies right like god we see so many of them man it's like these these weird movies where it's like oh hey this cute and cuddly lion cub and it has this cute friendship with this girl and they go on adventures and yay not realizing that when the cub grows up, that basically it's going to rip her face off. But, hey, you know, I mean, for the meantime, though, she sure is cute and cuddly now, isn't she? Oh, oh, boy, boy. You know, there's just some weird ones out there that don't really, to me, make a hell of a lot of sense. They're just kind of there... Oh, well, I mean, what if we make a kid's movie, and the kid's movie includes something cute? Well, well what about a dog? Ah, man, we've, we've seen the dog stuff all the time. What about a cat? Oh, we've seen a lot of cat stuff. Okay, well, a uh, bird? Ah, birds don't really sell that well. Ah, and they, they, they go through the list. They're like, well, a uh, 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 possum? Ah, not too ugly. A uh, uh, porcupine? Ah, uh, kids could be scared. Oh, a, a cub, a lion cub, you know, because, I mean, oh, look, oh, look at the ears and, you know, the snout and everything. Oh, it's, it's kind of it's cute, right? I was like, okay. Yeah, then anything for, uh, for you know, parents to shell out the money for the kids to watch this unique take on, you know, a family-friendly animal comedy. Sure, why the hell not, man? I mean, truth be told... Yes, lions are cute and cuddly. Of course they are. That's a no-brainer. However, you know, let's be real, man. I mean, they're dangerous, okay? I mean, if you've ever seen movies like Roar, 
uh, or even the true life stuff with like Siegfried and Roy, man. I mean, if you if you remember what happened, I mean, they were training those lions, man, and they were really, really nice to them and, you know, obviously, you know, had kept them for a really, really long time. And, you know, just one day, you know, it's, it's, uh, they have a show going, live audience, and suddenly the, the lion just turns on one of them and literally just rips their fucking face off, man. Uh, literally, like, eating their face. And it's like, oh, geez, and we, and, and, and we thought it, they were cute. Oh, shit. Like, they, they were always dangerous, man. They're always dangerous. Like, it doesn't... Like, you, un, unfortunately, you know, these kids movies, they kind of, they, they kind of say, oh, it's cute and cuddly, and oh, wouldn't you like to own a lion cub? But the reality is, is, like, dude, they grow up, they like meat, and, and you're basic, you're basically a walking steak. So, you know, and if they're licking their chops at you, they're not doing it because they want to kiss you. Put, put it that way, okay? I'm just saying, man. Uh, I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's a fun enough movie. I'm sure it's an innocent film. Uh, but you want to know what? Uh, Snowball and Lena can stay the fuck away from my ass. And then I'm seeing they have the DVD of Metro. Today's commute is off the rails. <laughs> nice. I I like that tagline, baby. I like that one. And look at that cover. That's a nice cover, man. It almost looks like like speed or something, right? Like when when they're on the bus. However, they like totally fucked up, man. Like they totally fu fucking crashed that fucker, man. Ah, oh, goddamn Sandra Bullock and her driving. Keep your eye on the road, damn it. God. Oh, what is this going to be about? Oh, look. Oh, they are in for one hell of a bad day, put it that way. Hmm. A region the old metro subway leads to flooding of the underground transit system, leaving a group of survivors to brave the disaster. Ah, of course. A subway system goes goes wrong, and of course, all of the people have to survive and trust one another. Of course. We've seen these type of movies before. If you guys remember... Stallone did one of these. Yes, he did actually. Movie called Daylight. It's not a really a movie that many people really talk about when they talk about Stallone. I mean, they'll talk about a lot of other really great Stallone mo movies, but Daylight isn't half bad. You know, it's not like, you know, the best Stallone. I mean, he has maybe a couple one-liners, but not much. But it's a really good sort of survival you know, underground transit drama. It's, it's got, got some good action to it. It's actually pretty decent overall, I, I would say. But it's a movie that's not really remembered all that well. And I have a feeling that Metro won't be either, to be fair. I mean, it's got an interesting idea. I'm sure some of the, you know, the the whole like wreckage and all of the the flooding and stuff could be cool but dude if it ain't got Stallone doing one line liners I ain't interested man just saying Metro could be interesting could be a cool little underground transit disaster film but you know when it comes to to, to d disaster I'll either take it with Stallone or I'll I'll take like aliens blowing up the White House Either or, man, but certainly not on the, the metro rail system. <laughs> Put it that way, man. Then the next thing, well, speaking of space and aliens, battle in space, the Armada attacks. All right, what is this? We got fight back or be destroyed. Yeah, I like, let's fight those motherfucking evil aliens. Right? Oh, boy. What am I in for with Battle in Space? What in the hell am I in for, man? It's total interstellar war. Yeah, let's see. Oh, God help me. In 2420, after aliens and powerful space wizards have enslaved human villages, a group of 
resistance fighters organize a counterattack against their alien overlords and launch an armada of spacecraft in a battle for supremacy in space. Uh, wait a minute. You know, not only do we have to deal with aliens, we have to deal with evil, powerful space wizards? What? Come on, man. I mean, Jesus. Ah, I mean, is, is, isn't is anybody friendly in space? Fuck. God. Man, where is, like, Obi-Wan or, you know, fucking Mace Windu when you you need, like, good space wizards? Oh, yeah. Obi-Wan is on a desert planet, basically hiding out, and, you know, Mace Windu was flown out uh, a window. Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay. Well, apparently they're not they uh they're not really the space wizards to call apparently. Uh, okay. I guess we're on, we're on our own, guys. Oh lord. I don't know, man. This this thing it looks really cheap, man. Fuck. It looks so impossibly cheap. Shit. This looks pretty bad, dude. I I'm not going to lie, man. I mean, I've seen really bad uh, sci-fi space movies. I've seen them. I've experienced them. Skyline, anybody? Yes, I have experienced my fair share, man. Trust me, I have. I don't know if I could go down, like, really cheapo space stuff. I, I mean, you know, I guess if it's kind of goofy, I maybe can do it like, like Leprechaun 4. Right, Leprechaun 4 is kind of, is really cheap as far as a s space movie is concerned, but it does have a wisecrack and Leprechaun in it, so, uh, you know, kind of balances out, I guess, I mean, I, I don't know, I, I need something, man, you know, just this straight up trying to be like this serious interstellar space war movie, and you, and and you don't even have the budget for uh, for you know fucking McDonald's for the crew. Like I I mean come on man, this does not look good to me whatsoever. I mean the cover is cool, but you and I both know we both know quite well that just because it has a good cover doesn't mean that it is a good movie. We've seen quite a few. Trust me, we have. We've seen our fair share of really bad indie movies that have really great covers and when you buy it and then when you finally watch it you're like fuck my life i just spent fucking 15 dollars on this fucker oh my god what what human being who made this do i have to smack in the face <laughs> like seriously ah uh, no man no no way dude it it looks it it just looks all kind of cheap. It, you know they're trying to go for like kind of like the Ripley vibe. Good luck, cause you ain't Sigourney Weaver. Uh, you definitely ain't, ain't Star Wars. Hell, you probably ain't even Skyline. And man, that's bottom of the barrel. So uh, Battle in Space, more like I'll pass. But good luck to whoever experiences Battle in Space. Just saying. And that does it for the second Walmart. Some very interesting, weird, uh, oddball, and uh, flat-out cheap indie goodness. All right. Well, this was an interesting stack. Faith-based goodness. Tiger cubs, which look cute, but especially they'll eat your face off. Transit gone terribly wrong, and it's nice to know that in the year 2420, we'll be invaded by powerful space wizards. Seriously? <laughs> oh boy, guys, what interesting physical media goodness we found this time at the second Walmart. Quite the interesting stack, dare I say. I hope you enjoyed it, and as I say before, guys, expect that not every week we're going to find something at the second Walmart. There will be some dry spells, just going to happen from time to time, but I'm going to do my best to find as much physical media as I can for you guys. 
the weird, bizarre, outrageous, the what the f <laughs> everything I will try my best to show off for you guys. So, uh, it's been a rough physical media ride this week for sure. Was hoping a little bit more plentiful, but it's been more on the... Wah, wah, a little bit on the downer side. However, the fourth location could possibly steer us in the right direction. How about we head to the next location and see if we can find, hopefully, more physical media goodness. Alright, everybody. We are at our fourth and final location, and... Damn, I hope it's going to be good here, man. <laughs> I really do. It's been a rough go of it this week. It really honestly has, man. I mean, for a week that was supposed to have a lot of plentiful titles, man, these stores are barely carrying jack, man. Damn. So, uh, can the beast be the savior yet again? Well, I guess it's time to find out when we head to Best Buy. The beast. Best Buy, baby. Ah, uh, yeah. Boy, I'll tell you, some weeks are rough. Other weeks, boy, it's a real pain in the butt. This week, definitely, definitely has been a challenge for sure. But if anybody can turn around, it is the beast. So let's see if Best Buy can pull it out once more. All right, we are in at Best Buy under the new releases, and oh, there's actually some new releases worth talking about, guys. Oh, Best Buy might just save the day after all, baby, just might. And the first thing I'm seeing here is they have the Blu-ray digital of Batman Soul of the Dragon for $22.99. The 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray digital for $27.99. And they also have the 4K HD Blu-ray Digital only at Best Buy exclusive for $32.99. This actually comes with a exclusive figure of one of the, the main badass 70s characters. Great, look at that. <laughs> with the yellow muscle shirt and, and the fro. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh my god. They usually do. Best Buy usually does these sort of... Uh, these exclusives where they have the little figurine in, inside, man. They, they they always tend to for most of these DC animated movies. So so there you go. Not, uh, not bad uh, exclusive for all you only at Best Buy exclusive lovers. Which I know there is quite a few. I'm not gun gun to lie, man. Now, to be realistic with you... To, to be honest, man, like I said, this is a lesser Batman animated movie overall for the DC Universe. I do love Batman, and I'm kind of curious with you guys. What do you think about Batman within the animated movie forum? Do you think that he's one of the better ones? Do you think that... Somebody like uh, Superman is better. Is Wonder Woman coming up? Green uh, Green Lantern. I think Batman is probably... Even if we weren't just talking the animated movies, I think Batman is sort of the heart and soul, in a lot of ways, of the DC Universe. I mean, I guess you could say Superman. And trust me, I love Superman. I, I, I love the, the character. He's my favorite of all the DCs, clearly. But... With Batman, I think I think the rogue gallery of villains are so much better than any of, of the other DC heroes. I think the stories that you can tell with Batman are just more dynamic. There's just a lot more variety. And also with Batman, you have the idea of this very dark and tortured soul. And the stories that you can do with that... And the character that you can introduce is really dynamic and really interesting. So overall, I'm honestly a fan, man. I think he definitely holds his own. And I think that without Batman, I think the DC Rogue Gallery is not as plentiful, dare I say. He's, he's the one that brings it all together. And I truly do believe that wholeheartedly. I really I, I honestly do, man. I would like to see more Wonder Woman creep into the animated ones. I'd like to see Martian Manhunter, which would be really cool. 
where Green Lantern needs to come up a little bit. But, you know, you're always going to do your your heavy hitters first. And Batman is one of those. I'm kind of curious as to what you think. Is it Do we have too much ba- Batman animated stuff? Do we have too much Batman in general? Is Batman wearing out as far as the culture is concerned? Or will there always be a place for more Batman love in the world? I'm very curious to know what you you guys think. Very curious. But like I said, it's a decent movie. I mean, it's not terrible. But as far as a a full-on Batman animated adventure, it just doesn't really cut it. Again, Batman is mostly sidelined in the story. And when you're sidelining Batman... And see, this is what what I'm saying to you guys. I mean, this is what I'm saying. Batman is really the soul of the DC universe overall. So if you're sidelining him in his own story, there's something wrong with that, man. It's got some good parts to it, but the overall effect, not as good as a lot of the other DC animated movies in recent memory. Just my honest opinion, guys. You do get here Batman Ra Groove... Producer Jim Chris far out highlights. Uh, sneak peek at the next animated DC Universe when Justice Society World War II. Well, that could be interesting. And DC Vault 2 bonus cartoons as well. Not bad features. Again, if you're a DC animated lover, you might love this regardless because you're just a fan of the DC Universe world. And honestly, the DC animated movie is far superior to the Marvel ones. So... Even if this is slightly less than average or average at best, still beats a lot of the Marvel stuff. Regardless, 70s Kung Fu James Bond style Batman. Even if it's average, how can you really go wrong? And then I'm seeing they have the Blu-ray of the complete second season of Doom Patrol, baby, for $29.99. Look at that, playing off a little Wizard of Oz right there. <laughs> I think so, babe, baby, look at that. Ah, Doom Patrol. What doesn't kill you, makes you stranger. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Wow, Doom Patrol, man. So, I'm not gonna lie, I remember when I was watching that first season of Doom Patrol, not knowing anything about the Doom Patrol whatsoever. I had heard a lot of really great things about the show, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to give this thing a chance. I mean, honestly, I am, because I've just heard a lot of good things, and I like the trailers, and it it looks like some really quirky characters, and and I'm going to give this a go, man. And how pleasantly surprised I honestly was, man. I mean... I, I mean, the characters were awesome. I mean, they were fantastic. They were diverse. The The stories were very strange and intriguing. And I thought the powers were really diverse. And I just, I just thought every episode was sort of a new treat to sort of savor. And, and I couldn't wait until the sa- second season. Now, I watched the second season uh, mostly through Amazon Prime. And... I gotta admit, okay, that the second season continues the awesomeness just from the first season, man. Again, just as diverse of a cast, just as diverse of of stories as well. It, it's just it's it's even stranger, even weirder. The stories get more insane and ridiculous, but that's kind of what I expected. Like when you get into a second season, you just have to up the ante even more. And they did, man. All of the same lovable characters are back from the last season. And even new characters as well. One of my favorite new characters is Dorothy, uh, Niall's daughter. She is amazing of a character, man. Really just a very unique, interesting character that you dive into. And just her story and, and her powers. Just amazing stuff, man. I just, I I loved it, dude. I mean, the special effects, the humor, and I gotta say the creativity here. Because the creativity is absolutely groundbreaking, amazing. 
I think what the show reminds me of is it reminds me of a comic book version of Farscape, which is what it does. I mean, Farscape was a very unique and interesting sci-fi show, but, and yes, all the episodes really carried over to an overall narrative and story arc, but you'd go to different planets, you'd meet the different characters, you'd get into weird situations, and then you'd go off onto the ship and you'd go off to, to, the, to the next crazy weird planet or weird ad adventure that, that you find across the world or well the galaxy in this case but i kind of feel like that's the way with doom patrol man and i've i've really appreciated that man this is great i think it's just as good as the first season now it's got less episodes compared to the first season there's only nine here compared to like i believe like the the 15 or so that the first season had now they were actually supposed to get 10 episodes but because of the coronavirus, they could not film the 10th episode. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, they were able to unfortunately kind of cut short the season. But I think that the end of it is still intriguing enough. You don't get the kind of answers that you want. It, it, it didn't really fit as a full-on sort of cliffhanger that maybe they were hoping for. But they had to make do with what they did i mean thankfully they do have a third season coming of this show i know they are in the middle of filming it i cannot wait i just want there to be a bigger fan base for this show i know it's moving over to hbo max hopefully more eyes are going to be on the show that's what i hope i mean it's an expensive show to make there's a lot of moving parts and i know that overall that the show the 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 fan base is very niche i'm hoping that it gains more of a following because i want to see more adventures with this crew i really honestly do man i know that some people got turned off by the sexuality on on the show that it's maybe a little too much reminds them maybe a little bit too much of like game of thrones but doom patrol even from the first season on has been very kind of perverted in a lot of ways and uh, to me, why tone it down? If you set a tone like that early on, then honestly, why not stick to that tone? I mean, seriously, man. I mean, if you've watched that first season, you know what you're walking yourself into. So it's not like this is a big surprise going into the second season. Oh my God, they're suddenly perverse and there's nakedness. Like you, you knew what you were signing up for when you watched the first season. So... That argument to me kind of goes out, out the door. But it's a, an awesome show with awesome characters. And the stories are really dynamic and creative. And as a as sort of a superhero comic book lover. And I, I'm always looking for something that's not always the most conventional thing. It's always kind of quirky. And it's, it's a little stranger than your normal superhero tale. Doom Patrol fills that void in a big bad way, man. Honestly does, dude. You get two feature ads, Doom Patrol, The Magic of Makeup, and Doom Patrol Season 2, Come Visit Georgia. Not bad. I would have loved to have seen some commentaries or anything, but I understand C coronavirus, hard to get people to actually, like, you, you know, do special features and all. But regardless, doesn't matter. Doom Patrol is absolutely amazing. The creativity is astounding to me. The characters are quirky and weird and bizarre, and I love every single fucking minute of it. Dude, this show rocks if you haven't watched doom patrol yet i highly highly recommend it and then i'm seeing they have the blu-ray of synchronic for 14.99 oh some sci-fi goodness baby anthony mackey jamie dornan i like that cover man a little bit trippy hmm i like that Okay, so I got a chance to watch this on Amazon Prime, guys, and I had no idea what to expect with this movie. I had never seen the trailer. I knew nothing about the story. I hadn't even seen reviews about this movie, truth be told. Uh, nothing. And so I walked into this movie extremely blind, but I was like, okay, it's coming out this week. I'm going to give it a chance, right? And I was blown away by this movie i am dead serious guys i was i i'm shocked how much i love this movie man i mean basically it's about these two paramedics who 
our friends they they have some issues with one one another but they're extremely tight with each other and they're seeing a lot of these deaths and they're chalking up to this new party drug called synchronic but what they don't realize is that what synchronic does is it almost like it, it sort of transports you time travel style to a different era and uh, almost like a different world and that you're stuck there for a certain amount of time until you're sort of brought back after the effects of the drugs start to wear off and you're just in this really violent world trying to survive and you can get killed by anything and no matter you know what spot you're in in like your apartment or somewhere if you take the drug it will transport you to a different place whether it's like the arctic cold or like or like the racist south you name it man i mean it literally and you have to try to fight and survive your your way before you get stuck there for good it's it's really fascinating of sort of mixing with the idea of a drug culture movie with sort of a little bit of a sci-fi bend to it I thought this was a really fantastic movie, man. Anthony Mackie and Jamie Dornan are fantastic here because you have to sell the crazy. You have to sell the impossible. And these guys do an amazing job at it. They, they really honestly do. They sell it in a big, bad way, and it honestly works. It really, really does, man. Truly. I love the idea of a simple white pill that could transport you to a different era one that is extremely challenging, one that you have to watch out for any for anything and anybody coming coming at, at your way. And that it's almost like taking the drug, you almost think like you're 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 like tripping, right? You're like tripping in a weird dreamlike state. But then you realize that it's far too real when somebody's like stabbing you or shooting you or something and you're like holy shit like this is real like i've just been transferred this drug is like taking me to new heights that i've never seen before i mean this draw drug ain't ecstasy put it that way man oh i mean shit i'd rather take ecstasy than take a, a fucking synchronic man that's for damn sure oh wow dude oh my god man i i loved it I was I was intrigued by the movie. I was intrigued by Anthony Mackie's character because they even go so far in this movie, guys, to talk about uh, the pineal gland, which is very unique and very interesting, man. Because as a fan of unique sci-fi horror, I, I love a movie like From Beyond. And if you know anything about From Beyond, it's all about the pineal gland and seeing other dimensions and other worlds and... The idea that Anthony Mackie has this ability, even though when you get older, your pineal gland starts to sort of like maybe like harden up and is not as effective. His still is. And so he's still able to go back and forth through these eras and through these worlds and just trying to figure out the rules and the do's and don'ts and the drama that goes with that. It's awesome. I think the special effects, I think the story, I think the characters, everything works here. And I am pleasantly pleased by, by this movie. Seriously, this is a great blend of a sort of dramatic friendship story mixed with the sci-fi elements that work incredibly well, dude. Seriously. Synchronic was honestly a surprise to me. I loved every second of it, dude commentary making of pre-visualization vfx breakdown deleted scenes alternate ending trailers i mean you get a lot here man for your your money 14.99 is not a bad price i'm telling you guys this is a good one seriously i'm not always a fan of anthony mackie i'm not gonna lie and certainly not always a fan of jamie dornan but these two make a great duo t together and the story and the sci-fi elements are great. If you're a sci-fi lover, not in like the sci-fi space aspect, but more of like a mind bender stuff, almost like a movie like Existence or something to that degree, give Synchronic a chance, man, because I guarantee you it's a satisfying journey 
into some crazy mind-bending madness. And put it this way, Jamie Dornan isn't trying to dominate Dakota Johnson, so, you know, win-win. Or for some people, maybe that's a win-loss. Oh, and let's get to some horror goodness, shall we, with the Blu-ray digital of Come Play. Ha <laughs> ha, very nice. He's good at taking friends. Yes, he is, man. Yes, he is. Oh, look at that creepy long-armed fucker. <laughs> look at that. Oh, my God. I saw this on Amazon Prime, okay? I... I was very intrigued to watch this because I had been hearing some decent things about Come Play. I've heard that it was very creepy, it was atmospheric, they really loved the the monster, they, there, was, there was a lot of good things I had heard. I had also heard a little bit mixed as well, so I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into this interested, but I'm, I'm going to be fair to it, man. And look, I... I fucking love this movie, dude. I'm serious, man. I love Come Play. Oh, my God. Look at that. God, that is so fu fucking cre creepy, dude. Jesus. This this movie, dude. Seriously. Basically, it's about this monster who... Who is in... Is, is in technology. And it feeds on your loneliness and it feeds on your fear and, you know, it feeds on, you know, just, just preying on your emotions. And he's trying to take this one, this one mute kid who, who is kind of lonely in his life, doesn't really have any friends, and he's trying to take advantage of this, of this sort of kid's vulnerability and it's sort of the monster sort of worming his way into this kid's life and and slowly revealing itself and basically trying to to kill or hurt anyone that is is in is in his way and man is this so, so great dude i mean i thought the the scares here were so great man there were certain scenes where it got really quiet right it got so quiet and like you're like characters are like creeping around corners and like it's really dark and shit and and I'm like oh lord oh oh no no oh lord oh my god oh please 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 lord help me <laughs> like I'm like oh my man somebody give me a paramedic man <laughs> I'm like oh dude and I thought the characters were really well drawn and 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 honestly really well figured out i liked the mother here i thought she was really loving and supportive and i really loved the the young kid who played the son the acting is really phenomenal you can feel the emotion and frustration in his face there is certain characters that kind of frustrate me like there's the father who doesn't really believe his son and i'm like you want to know what if i was the fucking parent if my kid told me that that there was like a like a monster come after him, I would I would fucking fumigate the house. I would fucking get a priest. We're exorcists. We're we're gonna do an exorcism on this motherfucker. Like like we're doing everything we can, man. Fuck this, dude. Like I'm gonna trust my kid, man. I'm like, oh, dude. Like I thought the design of the creature was really well done. I mean, the the, the creature's name is Larry. And after seeing this creature, I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not trusting anyone named Larry. <laughs> well, fuck them. It's like, your name is Larry, dude. Dude, uh... I'm sorry, back the fuck off, bro. <laughs> like, dude. It, it is really, really fantastic. Really great. The horror works. The, the family drama works. It's, it's just very well... well-crafted of a tale. The horror aspects work. The creepiness. The scares. And it's not just, like, your average jump scares, too. It's just atmospheric stuff that just creeps you out, man. I mean, I watch this in the dark. Like, seriously, I watch this in the dark with no one around. And, get, guys, I'm suggesting do not watch it in the dark because you are going to get freaked the fuck out. The last time I was this freaked by a horror film that I watched in the dark was the first Paranormal Activity. I remember watching that m movie, and at the end of it, I was fucking freaked, man. I was like, fuck. 
it's like i'm looking around corners i'm like what the fuck like like dude this is those the same thing and and i just love the idea of that there's a monster that's within the technology like w- within a cell phone or an ipad or something that that's trying to get you through like like reading the story it's it's it takes the idea of a fairy tale it takes the the idea of of loneliness and just creepily turns it into a twisted tale man so good dude come play was really really amazing i can't say there's a lot of really great new age horror that i like a lot of stuff goes for the cheap seats and the cheap jump scares and everything but come play is really well done really brilliant very well acted and as far as i'm concerned it is scary dude come play is a very very pleasant surprise man unfortunately no special features but i'm telling you man the kid wasn't annoying the mother was really was really you know well acted and and had a great role here the monster is incredibly effective and eerie and creepy man i gotta tell you you know what this as far as really great new age horror is is a keeper man and like i said if you want to scare the shit out of like your 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 girlfriend or somebody else a friend have them watch this shit in the dark seriously man it'll creep you the fuck out (laughs) seriously man i love that dude wow so fantastic man and what a really great variety so far synchronic come play some more batman love with that batman exclusive and the ever loving dooms patrol not bad man great so far so good man some good variety let's see if it continues and over on this end of best buy we are seeing a few more new releases worth diving into and i'm so happy dude not gonna lie we get to see fat man (laughs) the blu-ray digital for 14.99 oh my god dude let's let's dive into fat man seriously (laughs) wow i had heard about this movie man everybody was talking about this movie dude like dude like Mel Gibson plays Santa, and I'm like, uh, wait, what? Like I'm like, what the hell? Revenge never takes a holiday. You damn right it doesn't. Oh my god, especially with fucking Mel Gibson. You can bet your ass it doesn't. Oh lord. So basically, right, this movie is about Mel Gibson. He plays Chris Kringle, Santa Claus. And this guy, man, is a fucking mess. He's depressed as shit. He's a fucking drunk. Uh, you know, he's he's just really having a bad time as 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 of late, man. And we're getting so close to Christmas Eve and everything. He's got to start to get get ready. And meanwhile, there's this twelve year old that's really been been writing to Santa Claus and really wanting you know a certain thing but he's kind of this 12 is like a little fucking brat man i mean he's he's a maniacal fucking brat and so well what does he get on christmas well he gets big fat zippo baby he gets a piece of coal in his fucking stock stock in that motherfucker and so and and so he is so pissed seriously that he hires a hitman an assassin to fucking kill Santa Claus. And that is the premise of this fucking movie, man. And here we go. And I, God damn, dude, is this movie pretty darn cool, man. I, you know, it's not as... It's not as badass as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be the most ridiculous, crazy fucking action movie you've ever seen in in, in your life, man. It almost reminds me of that. Do you remember in that movie Scrooge where they had a commercial for this like Santa Claus movie where the Santa Claus was was like with a gun and like and like killing people and wreaking havoc? I was like, okay, that's going to be Fat Man, dude. But no, not so much. But I still really did love the movie. And it's more of kind of like it's... It's an introspective look into a man that has lost faith in Christmas and in the ideas of of giving in the world. 
the idea that he's he's being forced to partner with with the U.S. government to to make weapons in order to get enough cash to 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 make it to next Christmas because he's got to worry about his overhead costs and paying the elves and, and all shit like that. I mean, stuff that like you know, like like really, like he has to worry about production costs. I'm like, fuck, man. Like that was the last thing that I think anybody ever thought when when they sent a a card to fucking Santa Claus. Like, oh, geez, I I, I wonder what mi minimum wage the elves are are making. You think they're making fifteen dollars? I kind of highly doubt it. <laughs> I highly doubt that shit, man. But it also sort of involves sort of the assassin and why he's doing because he's also obsessed with Santa, right? Because Santa really didn't give him the attention he deserves when, you know, when he was younger. So he's always had a thing against Santa as well. So this is like his opportunity to get back to that motherfucker and seek his revenge, man. It's a very interesting movie, man. It really is. It's part action movie, part sort of introspective drama, all within the backdrop of, of like, a depressed and drunk Santa Claus. Like, like, seriously, man. It's good. I mean, Mel Gibson is awesome here, man. Really. I mean, with the beard and... I mean, we don't get to see him actually, like, put on a red suit and fly with the fucking reindeer or shit. I mean, that would have been cool. But, you know, you get to see him when he's not being the jolly old, old fat man that you usually remember. You know, the idea that what happens to him every other day like 364 days what happens to him and you you get to see that you get to see the struggles that he deals with and, and the dilemmas and and the fact that he's got to protect everybody around him like there's a lot of really great elements here and mel gibson plays it so well dude he plays badass he plays you know depressed he plays a guy that just man just give him another fucking vodka man please <laughs> like, like he, he does a great job and so does Walton Goggins man I've always loved Walton Goggins Walton Goggins is always so awesome and he's one of those dudes that like the intensity that he brings is so fantastic man he, he like he just oozes like intensity sometimes and you can just feel that he is like a fucking psychopath that just is waiting to burst man he, he's great I, I love the I love the gunfight here, the gunplay stuff. I mean, I mean, fucking, fucking Santa Claus with a gun, man. I mean, how many times have you ever seen that? You, you haven't. It, it's great. And so Mel Gibson is awesome here. The story is great. The, the action is pretty cool, man. Overall, and just seeing Mel Gibson as a drunk, depressed, pissed off Santa Claus. I never thought I would see this. I never thought I wanted it until I actually saw it. And I now am realizing what I've been missing in my life for all these years. Like, so, so good, man. I mean, I'm kind of jealous. I'm not going to lie. Because with me being Jewish, like, I don't have, like, my own version of a pissed off drunk Santa Claus. And now I suddenly want to be christian and celebrate the holiday or just continue to watch mel gibson be the meanest and fattest pissed off drunk and just fed up santa claus of all time so good man oh man you get deleted and extended scenes storyboards to film commentary oh my god commentary by mel mel gibson Oh, God, I can't wait to hear what he has to say, dude. Oh, my God. Ah, some pretty decent fe features, man. Honestly, I didn't know what I was walking myself into. I had heard good things. Everybody is saying Mel is awesome here. And that it's a really cool kind of quirky, odd action movie with fucking Santa Claus. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And it, and it delivered. For the most part, it really d delivered. I, it was more than I thought it was going to be. And once you see Mel Gibson as a pissed off Santa Claus, you honestly can't look back. <laughs> and, and now, 
I kind of want to be celebrating Christmas just so a pissed off Mel Gibson Santa Claus can send me presents. Please? Pretty please? And then I'm seeing they have the Blu-ray digital of Born a Champion for $14.99. Once in a lifetime, opportunity knocks twice with Sean Patrick Flannery and Dennis Quaid. A little sports inspiration goodness? I think so, because the match is over, but the fight never ends ha <laughs> ha okay let's get into this thing man because i got a chance to watch this on amazon prime and i'm not gonna lie i wasn't really even feeling as far as wanting to watch this thing i, I, I wasn't really feeling it man I, I mean i did because i saw it was coming out this week and i said well maybe it might be in stores i'm gonna give this thing a look but I really didn't know much about it, and I thought it was just going to be a, just this lame melodrama. That's what I thought, honestly, man. So I was just not even interested, but I, I, want, I wanted to watch it. What the hell? I wanted to give it a chance. Now, basically what this movie is about is Sean Patrick Flannery's character, who is a student of jujitsu. It's basically taught him a lot of life lessons within the world. It's a passion of his. It's something that he strongly, strongly believes in. And one day he has this match, this fight, and he gets almost killed, literally to, almost to the point of death. And this guy literally beats his ass so badly. And it's basically the story of him basically picking his life back up, picking the pieces back together, trying to trying to maybe find some semblance of normalcy and, and, and understanding and putting putting the past behind him, but also finding the strength within to sort of redeem himself and come back and fight this person who who almost nearly killed him and it's the struggles and it's the passion and it's the life that 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 he leads and it's just a tale of inspiration and redemption and and learning from the past and Man, did this movie surprise me. Seriously. And honestly, this movie truly, truly, really, honestly surprised me, man. I, I went into this movie not giving two shits. Seriously, I, I was ready to just count this movie out from the word go. And that's my fault. Because I shouldn't do that. But that's what I thought. Because I'm like, ah, oh, Sean Patrick Flannery. He's he's just going to be a melodramatic role for him. And he's just going to overact this, this motherfucker. That's what I thought. And I mean, not many people really think much of Sean Patrick Flannery anyways. I mean, outside of a couple roles like Boondock Saints. And of course, he, he was in Powder. A couple other things. Not ma many people really have much of an opinion of him. He's just kind of there as an actor. But... Man, did he give it his all in this role, dude. He is amazing here. I mean, I love the drama he, he has with these characters and how he really sort of gives it his all, whether he's, like, trying to do these fight scenes with jiu-jitsu. And, and I understand that he's not, like, going to be the best fucking jiu-jitsu fighter in the world. It's not like he's, like, he's, like, learned jiu-jitsu all his life or anything, but... And I realized that they have to film the, the, the fight scenes and all the jujitsu stuff in a clever way to kind of make you believe it all. But I think it really works. I mean, he really, he comes across as a very kind-hearted, passionate soul who doesn't want to really harm anybody. But he has a passion for this and, and he wants to prove himself. And it's such a powerful role and he brings it all. He really does, man. He gives it his all in this role. And you can tell, man, he really is, is really, as far as acting is concerned, he's acting his heart out here. And it really shows, man. I mean, he does a good job. Dennis Quaid has a small role here, not a big role, but it is effective. Katrina Bowden, who plays, I believe, his love interest, she does an amazing job as, as well. She's heartfelt. She's worrisome for him. You could really tell that, you know, they really work on, on the love story. And you can feel the love between them. The jujitsu stuff, the fight sequences are pretty good. Now, mind you, 
they have to shoot it a certain way, but you feel the intensity of the jujitsu. You feel when you're entering into the ring with these people that you could get seriously harmed and seriously hurt and killed and and that this is not this is not playtime here. This is real. And you feel it. I love the characters here. You know, you have the heartfelt characters like a Sean Patrick Flannery. You have slimeball characters like Costas Mandalore is in here from the Saw series. And he plays this really slimeball dude who you just want to hate. And it's just a great story about redemption and honor. And man, did I enjoy this. I was never bored for a single second. I seriously wasn't. I mean, the movie is like an hour and 45, hour 50, somewhere around there, and I was never bored. Swear to God, guys, not for a single second. Like, usually with these movies, I'm bored maybe a little bit, but I, I was loving the story. I was loving Sean Patrick Flannery here. I was loving the, the arc and, and the inspiration of this tale. I, I loved every single second of this. Truthfully, man, I really did. I was blown away by this movie. I believe this is a true story about this man and what happened and it's so fascinating what happened to this dude somebody who really almost got killed to, to an inch of his life and the fact of what kind of inspirational life he led amazing man this this movie blew me away dude i mean it's part it's part sort of dramatic jujitsu tale and it's also part documentary where the actors who are playing the characters are kind of talking on camera of, about the actual, you know, person and what they went through. And it's, it's, it's a fascinating movie. It really honestly is, man. I mean, I was ready to sort of call this movie a wash and say, oh, man, okay, I'm, I'm ready for a stinker, dude. But this movie was really heartfelt, truly inspiring, a great dramatic tale. And I'm going to give Sean Patrick Flannery a lot of love here because... That man, he pulled his weight. This is the Sean Patrick Flannery show, and he does not disappoint. He gave it his all. This is, to me, one of the best performances of his career. I truly do believe that, and I mean that, and this movie is amazing. I, honestly, truly it is, man. You get director's commentary and trailer gallery. If you are a fan of martial arts, jujitsu, if you're a fan of inspiring true life tales, guys, watch this movie it will not disappoint i was blown away by this movie and it just proves that once you give a movie a chance it can truly surprise you and born champion really did and last but certainly not least we have the blu-ray digital of snow piercer the complete first season for 24.99 a little sci-fi tv show tnt goodness of course man now i got a chance to watch most of this season on amazon prime i haven't seen it all i gotta finish it now this is based off of a movie directed by bong joon ho starring chris evans if you guys have never seen the movie snowpiercer i highly highly recommend it it's a great great sci-fi action movie love it to to death man fantastic flick okay awesome now with any sort of show or any really great movie i should say eventually you're going to get some sort of like copycat they t they take the rights and they make it into a tv show it has happened so many times before it'll happen again many more times and snowpiercer is just yet another example of that so Basically, it's really the same premise, the same idea of these these people, these the survivors of this end of the world catastrophe that happened. The, the the whole world basically froze, and they're all on this this train that is circling the world, and they're just staying alive day to day. There's the upper class, and there's the lower class, and it's just a tale about survival, rich versus poor the haves and the have-nots and that's really what it's primarily about mostly but it's just stretched into sort of a tv show forum essentially now for the most part i got to admit this 
there's there's a lot of similarities to the movie, but there's yet a lot of differences as well, and I I knew that going in, obviously. For the most part, I've liked where they've went. Some of the characters are a little irritating. Some of them are really fascinating. Some of the storytelling is unique. Others feel like there's missed opportunities. The first season so far is a bit of a mixed bag for for me. The first half of the season from what I from what I saw was very much a sort of murder mystery. You know, this person solving this mystery about who killed this person, et cetera, et cetera. And then sort of the back half of the show deals more in sort of the the class system of the ship, what's going on, you know, who you you can trust, who's lying to you, all these sort of things that they're dealing with here. Overall, I've enjoyed it. Do I think it's equal to the movie? No, I don't think it's equal to the movie. I think the movie is way better, but you kind of have to take a little bit of a difference between a TV show format and a movie format. That's just, there's just di di different ways you're going to develop the story, different ways you're going to develop the characters. But overall, I do really enjoy what I've seen so far. I like the idea of being on this, this train and the loyalties that you have and who do you double cross there's, there's a lot of intriguing stuff here that I think works in Snowpiercer and I gotta admit man that overall the acting here is also really well done I think that Jennifer Connelly is awesome here it's so great to see Jennifer Connelly in a really great meaty role man I've always loved Jennifer Connelly in a lot of the movies she's, that she's done career opportunities and of course, Labyrinth and a whole bunch of other stuff. She's always been great, man. I love seeing her again in 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 this as as well. Uh, David Diggs does a really great job here as well. I've seen him on Hamilton, but I haven't really seen him do something like this before. I think he's really effective. Plays a really great leading man type of role. He does a really good job here. Also, I like the setting here. I like I like the train. I like the different aspects of the train the different cars and you go from the more like lower run down areas to the more extravagant stuff the the more like rich side i i like that you know it reminded me again a lot of the movie certain aspects of the movie definitely carried all over here it's not a perfect tv show at least the first season hasn't been perfect it's a little rocky it feels like they're trying to find their footing a little bit, but I could see the possibilities of where they could go. And I think there's some twists and turns that are really nice here, and I know they have already have a, a second season, clearly. And I've seen some of the, the, the imagery and the trailer, and it looks cool. It looks like they're going in some very interesting and unique t directions, which I'm excited for. It's not the best sci-fi and when it comes to sort of TNT, it's not like they, they do sci-fi amazingly well. I mean, Falling Skies wasn't terrible, but it was just adequate. I think Snowpiercer has, has the opportunity to be much more I interesting and intricate and unique. Depends on where they go with the storylines and the characters, but I'm willing to go with it. Put it that way. I, I, I truly am. I'm willing to go with it. It's not bad, but just go in with checked expectations and realize that the movie and the TV show, even though there are similarities, not exactly the the same, far from it. Just, just go in with checked expectations, but it's not half bad. It's not. Decent. Has, has potential. Put it that way. We'll see where the p potential goes, man. You got Overview, Class Warfare, Jennifer and David, Behind the Scenes Interview, The Train, Behind the Curtain, Art of the Frozen World. I'm a big fan of science fiction, and I'm, I'm a big fan of unique and interesting science fiction. The idea that the world has frozen over, the idea that humanity is mostly dead, and the last remaining survivors are on this train, is an interesting concept and an idea. And I don't think it's been mined to its full potential yet in the first season, but I'm confident to see where it goes next. And I think there's greatness that I see within this first season. And if it carries over into the second season, it could be really effective. So I'm hoping. Let's let's hope and pray this one w w works out, guys. At least I hope. 
but not half bad. A three here and some nice additions up in the front. Not bad. I think it was a pretty good time here at Best Buy. Let's head out. Stay with me now. You know you want to. Best Buy deliver, baby. Yeah. Yes, man. Best Buy definitely delivered this week in a big, bad way, guys. Seriously, it really honestly did, man. Oh, dude, thank the Lord. I'm telling you, man. We rocky start, but Best Buy came through yet again. And the first of many videos at the last Best Buy location in my area. Ah, the old location is pretty much done. They're getting no more stock in, so... We're here now, man. So hopefully this bike, Best Buy, continues to hold up the tra tradition of, of the last one. And we're off to a good start. Not half bad, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh, thank the Lord it came through. I didn't know what we'd do without Best Buy. Trust me. All right. Let's head home and finish the video. All right, everybody. Uh, that'll do it for the Blu-ray and DVD out and about video this week oh brother <laughs> oh this fucking week oh my god man i was prepared to see a lot i i, I was because i was like there's a lot of really great um, additions coming out and movies and a bunch of variety and selection i'm thinking okay we're gonna see a lot of these stores and man was i wrong <laughs> Oh boy, uh, you know, look, it, uh, to me, physical media really depends on these retailers to get these additions out there. And now that we're in a pandemic, and now that movie theaters are shut down for a while longer, Physical media, I've told you guys, gains a whole new importance than it previously did. And a lot of people out there are looking for entertainment. They're looking for things that they haven't seen before. And yes, there's streaming, but I think they also see some of these releases on physical that, you know, a Netflix doesn't have and a Hulu doesn't have and some of these other sites. And so... It depends on these movies getting out on the store shelves. That's what that's what it depends. And so, you know, on a slow week, I get it. But I do feel the stores have a responsibility to get some of this physical media that, you know, that that will sell if it's out there on the market. It, it honestly will. I think it just depends, man, if people are passionate about putting that stuff out. I mean, I think Best Buy, for the most part, still to this day gets it. Even though they've lessened the importance of it and put a lot of the stuff in the back and really hit it and not really putting it as front and center as they used to, they're still getting the releases. They still understand it. Walmart gets it sometimes. And Target, well, Target's a whole n another deal, man. It just gets a little frustrating as a physical media lover knowing that, you know, there's really great movies out there. There really honestly is. And, you know, I'll tell you guys about them all day long. I'll tell you guys about these really great movies that are worth watching, TV shows that are worth giving a chance to. But... At the end of the day, it's all for naught if these stores don't supply it for the people who want it. You know, we're, we supply a lot of things in these re retail stores. It's about time we start getting back to putting physical media in an important role again. I'm not saying we have to go back to 10 or 15 years ago, which, by the way, I would be happy with, but... I want there to be a certain amount of sustainability for physical media still. And I want these people to understand that when you see these, 
when you see these charts and when you see these graphs and when you know they say well the the second quarter of 2020 the 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 blu-ray and dvd sales dropped by by 35 percent and, and and it's like you know they put that out there but they don't really they don't really give you the context for it that it's up to a lot of these uh, retailers to really do their due diligence to put this physical media out there front and center for people to buy and so at the end of the day i'm glad we finally saw a lot of really great stuff over at best buy that was worth talking about and engaging with you guys on but it should have been at most of the stores and what my hope is going forward for the rest of 2021 and beyond is that we can finally understand that even though physical media might not be as powerful as it once was with streaming and a lot of other things taking more precedent, but the fact that it still has a vital role to play. And if we don't give it that importance, if some of these retailers don't give it that importance, then then it's just going to fade from existence. And I don't want to see that uh, that happen. So I think it's important for big weeks to have the physical media out there for people who want them. You know, sometimes I wish that I was in charge of, like, the physical media at these stores. Or some of you guys were. Because, you know, maybe we would give it the proper kick in the ass that it needs. Just saying, man. I mean, again, I'm glad to finally see some of that cool stuff, but it was it was a little bit frustrating of a week. I'm not going to lie, man. It really honestly was. But regardless, a lot of really great stuff this week. I hope you guys found something good. If you did, definitely let me know. As far as I'm concerned, well, let's uh, see what I got, shall we? Well, it looks like I was supporting the stores in a big, bad way. Yes, indeed I was, man. Little Best Buy love never hurt nobody, did it? Of course not. And actually, thinking about this, guys, all of the weeks of January, the beginning of 2021 here, I have literally bought something at one of the stores every single week. That hasn't happened I, I don't think that's happened in like a long, long time, if ever, man. I don't know. I've just been finding some really great movies that I've loved that I've wanted to pick up. And so, why not, man? I figure, you know, if you love something, you might as well pick it up now. And the stores, I found some good stuff, so might as well take advantage of it. I, I mean, look. It's pretty simple, guys. If you put out the physical media, people are going to buy stuff. It's a pretty simple concept. It doesn't... It's not like brain surgery or anything, you know? Well, at least I don't think it is. So, I don't know. I Hey, I like some cool stuff. I, I buy it. What the hell, man? But yes, I picked up some cool stuff over at Best Buy, and... The first thing I got was the Blu-ray of Synchronic. Yes! Mm, dude, I love this movie, man. I just thought it was a really great premise, incredible acting, and just a really great sort of thinking man's mind-bending science fiction tale, which I really, really did appreciate. This actually... You know, thinking about this, this would make a really amazing Twilight Zone episode or, or something. Just stretched into a feature-length film, and it works really, really well. Like I said, the performances are great. I I love the the premise of the idea of this drug that can take you to another place, and that place is extremely dangerous, and... And that you might not come back. And if you do, you might die. And I, I, I really just love that. And I love how they, they use the characters and the situations. And this surprised me, man. This movie really, really did. I didn't think I was going to love it as much as I did. But, 
man, this is, this really is a, a fantastic movie. And it's from the directors of The Endless, which The Endless is actually a pretty unique and interesting movie as well. So uh, they, those filmmakers do some really unique stuff. And so The Endless is a really good flick, and they did it again with Synchronic. Very, very well done, man. Very great, great thinking man science fiction that I really do enjoy, man. I really, really like that one. I also ended up picking up the Blu-ray digital of Born a Champion. Yes! Um, ah, pick this up, man. I, I had to. Seriously, this is a real surprise for me. Honestly, it's an incredible surprise. And I think it's a surprise because... I went into the movie thinking, oh my god, I'm gonna, oh man, I'm gonna rip this movie a new asshole. This is gonna be bad, man. It's Sean Patrick Flannery. But it surprised me in such a really fantastic way. The acting alone, and Sean Patrick Flannery deserves so much credit because he did such a wonderful job bringing this character to life and making you feel for him in the situations. I thought the jujitsu stuff was really well done. I liked the, the redemption story, the inspirational tale. It, there's there's a lot going for this movie, and I would have never thought this would have been worth buying, but I fell in love with this movie so much that I, you know, have to pick it up. I wasn't planning on it, but it's going to end up in the collection. There you go. Not bad on that one. And last, but certainly not least from Best Buy, is the Blu-ray Digital of Fat Man. <laughs> Yes, yes, of course I picked up Fat Man. Oh my god. Of course, I had to have in the collection a mean-spirited, drunk, depressed Santa Claus. Of course, the Jewish guy has to have this. <laughs> of course I do, man. Oh my god, this movie, man, is wild. It really is, man. Mel Gibson does a great job, man. He really does. You know, this guy ain't jolly. Not one goddamn bit, man. He's got to worry about the overhead costs. He's got to worry about paying the elves. Working with the fucking U.S. government. Oh, man. And on top of that, people are trying to kill the, 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 the fucker just because he gives you a lump of coal. You can still use coal, right? I mean, you know, it's good, it's good for some stuff. So, so Santa's just doing you a favor, okay? Come on. Oh, some 12-year-olds just don't get it, man. They have to hire an assassin to kill Santa. It's Santa! And he's, and, and he's packing. And he's packing, okay? So I'm just saying, if you want to attack Santa, Santa uh, he's got a rifle waiting for you. And Mrs. Claus might have some as well. So, you know, they're, they're, they're packing heat, okay? <laughs> Oh my god, this is a wow woman, and I guarantee you, man, you haven't seen anything like this, dude, seriously. I mean, it's just very unique, very interesting, uh, original, and, you know, it's one of those movies that it, it truly has to be experienced, man. I just, I just really fell in love with it. Quirky, weird, bizarre, and somewhat heartfelt at the end, end of the day. Because why not with a drunken, depressed Santa Claus who somehow has to be jolly with kids at the same time. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, right? Oh, man. But still, really great. And Mel does a great job here. So I ha had to pick it up, man. So I got this. And that's not all. Because I also ended up getting a package in the mail from Kino Lorber, actually. Yes, I did, guys. This is actually the last package for January. Now, I have not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven titles, guys, that I have in this package right here. Seven titles. This was actually something that I got. I ordered it during that Black Friday week, and man, it's finally gotten to me. Took took a hell of a long time to get here, but finally did, man. Oh my god, it's got some Michael J. Fox goodness, Boris Karloff movies, some comedies, some fantasies. It's got a lot of really unique and interesting stuff. Uh, Sci-fi as well, really great, awesome sale. I took advantage of the Kino Lorber sale, and man, it's finally coming. I'm so, so ha happy, man. 
but you guys are not going to find out exactly what I picked up until my Blu-ray pickup video for January will drop, well, sometime soon. It will show off all the titles that I got for the month, and it's going to be a rather unique and interesting month. There's a lot of pickups from last month that I got, finally in the mail, retro titles, out of print movies, uh, new releases, there's some really cool stuff that I got, man, and I think you guys are gonna really like the pickups this time, time around, it'll be really, really, really cool, as always, as, as you guys know, so definitely stay tuned to that, and also, by the way, guys, I also put out my Blu-ray pickup video for October 2020, that sucker finally got released, put that one out that is a really really cool one a lot of really great horror goodness and i also released my latest dollar tree movie hunting video it's on the channel four freaking hours long it's heavy lifting of a viewing experience but a lot of really wonderful titles that i got to explore and talk about and show off and uh, i definitely go the distance man and that one is well worth it now, last week I talked to you guys about that I was going to put out three videos that weekend, was supposed to, the movie hunting video, the pickups, and Wonder Woman 1984, however, those other two videos uh, occupied a little bit more of my time than I would have liked, so, that was held back, however, you guys will be getting our Wonder Woman 1984 movie review, this upcoming weekend, it's going to have some really great stuff. John, Bob, and myself dive into all that Wonder Woman goodness. So definitely stay tuned to that. It's going to be a very fun video. You definitely do not want to miss it. And before I let you guys go, I, I got to talk about this. So... I'm seeing a lot more stuff on social media and Facebook and a lot of these other sites where pretty much everybody has now gotten very worried for the 2021 movie season. Yes, we are getting a lot of stuff through HBO Max, obviously, but there was a recent announcement about Bond about No Time to Die, and that it got pushed back yet again. Indeed it did, uh, down to, I believe, October of 2021. Now, there are movies that are considering going to 2022 and just saying, fuck it, this year is another lost year. Others are being pushed back very far again into the fall. Uh, others don't even have release dates at this point, to be honest with you. And so a lot of people are worried about that, and there's more calls for these companies to just release these movies through streaming, man. Just get them out there to, to people. I mean, there's more renewed calls for Black Widow again. Like, just put Black Widow out on Disney+. Plus. Like, there is a lot of calls for that. People are wanting it. They're like, just just put this thing out already, man. I mean, come on. And I kind of I kind of push back a little bit on that. Just a little bit. Now, yes, do I want to see these movies? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. I want to see the next Bond movie. I want to see Black Widow. I, I want to see all these flicks. I, I can't wait to. At the same time, putting them on streaming, I don't know if it's the ultimate best solution that to just put them on streaming and to skip the movie theater experience entirely, I don't know if that's the best possible answer that we have at this point. And the reason why I say that is because there's a possibility, if you really think about it, that if it goes straight to streaming and skips movie theaters entirely, we may not even ever get to see it on physical. Did, did you guys ever really think about this? I mean, because let's frame the argument for a second on Disney Plus, for instance, right? That, obviously, you know, shows like The Mandalorian and WandaVision right now that are going on are, you know, cool shows. P people like them. And there's movies on Netflix, which are Netflix originals that have yet to come on physical media. 
And right now, there's not even a timetable if that will ever happen at this point. And there was also an interview by Kevin Feige talking about if WandaVision and other Marvel TV shows that are up and coming will eventually come on Blu-ray or the 4K format. And let me quote Mr. Feige himself. He first goes on to say, is Mandalorian on Blu-ray? Sort of questioning the questioner in a lot of ways. Which, of course, it isn't. He also continued, you can pay a very low fee per month and have access to something that you can put it on your TV whenever you want. Now, this article goes on to say that no doubt Disney's hope is by not making the shows available on physical media will also encourage more people to stay subscribed to Disney Plus and provide an incentive for years to come for new subscribers. It also says other platforms such as Netflix have released some of their originals on physical media, but it can be years after being released on Netflix. <sighs> yep. This worries me. Because basically, Kevin Feige, yes, is the master of Marvel and is the head of all that, but he also has to toe the line because he has a boss. And if his boss says, well, we're not going to put it out on physical, why would we put it on physical media when, you know, if it's just on our platform and no one else can get it any other way, then of course they have to still subscribe to us. That just makes sense. And so I worry about movies like Black Widow and some of these other films that go straight to these streaming platforms and don't get a chance to be in theaters because then that means that these streaming platforms can just say well i mean if you still want the movie you're gonna have to pay what you want to pay for seeing it and if you don't pay then guess what you don't see it simple as that and and so i understand the huge frustration that's going on right now in the movie community of wanting to see these movies and wanting to and and wanting to be able to have access to them as soon as they can because they're just sick and tired of waiting and i can't blame them because i'm tired of waiting but i also understand that there's a lot of deals being made in Hollywood right now. There's a lot of backdoor deals about movies going to this streaming platform and this streaming platform. And there's going to come a point where these streaming platforms are not going to put this stuff out on physical media. They're just not going to do it. Hell, they're doing it now. Why would Disney Plus think that putting Black Widow on on physical would be beneficial for them when if it's when if it's a really good movie and people want to see it and if they want to see it over and over again well i mean if you, if you want it i mean i guess you're just gonna subscribe to, to disney plus now aren't you and this is the dilemma here do we want do do we want the quick and easy path or do we want the slightly more difficult and frustrating path which will eventually lead us to possibly still having stuff on physical media because as I've told you guys before nothing nothing is guaranteed and 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 if we don't if we don't demand that these things come on physical if we don't keep on questioning the authority of these of these uh streaming overlords that in some ways we're going to lose content that could go to more people in physical form and give it a little bit more of a wider audience and a little bit more of a possibility just having these people tell you to just pay a fee over and over and over and over again because if you want it that's how you're gonna get it i just don't think it's fair i just don't think it's right and it worries me to think that we're entering a period of time with these streaming platforms where content is going to be exclusive, guys. It's going to literally be exclusive and they're holding on to it for dear life. 
and they see no reason to put it out on physical when if you want it, you're just going to have to put your hard-earned money down and pay for the, the streaming platform and fuck physical. There, It's already starting. And if we do the quick and easy path with a lot of this, these movies and these upcoming content, there's a chance we may not see it on physical. So before you go and, and demand that all these things are coming on to streaming platforms and that we have to put these out as soon as humanly possible, weigh the cost of what that might do. Cost and benefits, you know, for every, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So just understand what you're, what you're doing when, when you say that. Think of all the scenarios before making a final decision. Because that final decision might bite you in the ass. I'm just saying, guys. I mean, definitely let me know what you think about that. I'm dying, dying to, to know. I just wanted to put my two cents into the conversation. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely give it the thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Check out the other Blu-ray and DVD Tuesday videos I do. The movie reviews with my friends. Live streams. Movie hunting videos like Dollar Tree hunts. Blu-ray pickup videos and much, much more. If you are a fan of movies, physical media, hit subscribe and become a part of the Film Fan Nation. I want to thank all of you wonderful, wonderful subscribers out there. The great feedback, the wonderful comments, liking the videos, really going out of your way to watch all of the the massive amount of, of hours of video goodness that I put out. I really do appreciate it, guys, so, so much. So thank you for, for the effort that you put into watching the content. And you give me the love, and hopefully I give the love right back to you. So thank you so much. And keep up to date with everything I'm doing through Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Film Fan 108. Keep up to date with everything I'm doing, plus special pictures and videos I do from time to time on social media as well. Alright guys, I will see you back next week for a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video. Take care everybody, and happy hunting.